So MMA fans have been fed up with Colby Covington. His antics, his shtick, it's been overused, it's been overdone. But Colby just dropped what may just be the best promo he's ever put out. And I think it may save his entire career. But what's in it for me? Tell me, why do I gotta go down in the rankings to fight some Casper the Ghost looking Irish kid who has a gold digging wife? So put your husband in the corner, get on your hands and knees, and beg. Colby Covington may have just saved his career calling out the perfect opponent. Ian Gary and Colby Covington is the perfect matchup for both guys, especially for Colby. I'm gonna discuss this promo. I'm gonna discuss his three stipulations. He wants stuff for me and Gary. He says that don't don't think you're gonna get this fight so easily. You're gonna have to do some things for me. I'm gonna discuss that, and we're also gonna discuss Francis Ngannou's most delusional video I've ever seen in my entire life. Francis also posted something that is just insanely delusional, and we're gonna watch that too. But the first thing we need to do is get the Ian Gary. It's very clear that Colby's stock has been plummeting. He had the worst performance of his entire career in his last outing against Leon Edwards. And it kind of annoyed me after the fact because people were saying, man, Colby talks so much shit and he never actually backs it up. He never shows up. When in reality, Colby actually always shows up as an absolute dog on fight night. And if anything, has in the past, more often than not, Got people to say things like, damn, say what you want about Colby, but when he shows up, dude, he's tough as fuck and he actually goes for it. But this was the first time in his career where he really shit his pants. Big time. Combine that with the fact that people are just getting tired of his shtick. It's kind of overplayed. Especially now that there are people like Sean Strickland competing with Colby for a similar fan base. And Strickland's just so much more genuine than Colby and people flock to that because he's genuine. And Colby may have not approached the trash talk in the best way going into his fight with Leon Edwards, said some things that a lot of the fans just could not stand, in particular about Leon Edwards' dad. And if you combine all that together, Colby's stock is plummeting, okay? It's totally down the drain. But this video is something that could have just saved his career as an MMA fighter. Now, Colby's taken a lot of time off. After his fight with Leon, he made a fuckload of excuses saying he got injured in the first round, broke his foot, and then had a horrible performance because of it. And it's like, listen, I, I kind of understand that. I get it. It might be true. But people get injured in fights and dude looked like he had shit his pants anyway. And um, I think there's a totally justified reason for people that were once fans of Colby to kind of be tired of his shit because he's been inactive. He's gotten undeserved title shots. His trash talk ain't even that funny anymore. His interviews, no one really cares about them anymore. It's overplayed. But even though Colby is so hated right now by the fans, people that used to like him too, a fight with Ian Gary, <laughs> the other most hated fighter in all of MMA right now would put people on Colby's side, okay? And this video was hilarious that he put out, basically calling Ian Gary a cuck, uh, making fun of Ian Gary for being a soy boy, you name it, vegan, peahead, Ian Gary. This can get the fans back on his side because who are they going to root for? Gary or Colby? And to me, it's like O'Malley versus Marab, right? A lot of people don't like O'Malley. They want Marab to be the guy to beat him because Marab is like O'Malley's antithesis. He's the polar opposite style, build, um, he doesn't have this, he doesn't have an entertaining fight style. He's not Mr. Clout. He's not Mr. Colored Hair. Marab's just a good old classic hard worker, just a grinder. And people want to see that guy destroy O'Malley, all right? And then there are people that want O'Malley to sleep Marab too. But for Colby, Ian Gary's the perfect guy for him to go out there and beat because Colby Covington is the loudmouth trash talker. He has like the classic jock vibe. And imagine him talking shit to Ian Gary in the buildup, like he did at UFC 296's presser. Imagine him whispering in the ear of Ian Gary if he starts getting the better of him in the second and third round. And Ian Gary's got to deal with Colby shit talking him and big brothering him. Colby has that noogie style where, you know, he can't really submit guys or hurt guys for the life of him on the, on the ground. But he has good control. And Colby's just a guy that smothers you. And he, he's really good with his neck cranks and his noogies. And he's just got the freaking shove into the locker style. And there's no better opponent to root for if you're not an Ian Gary fan than Colby Covington because he's got the best style to embarrass him. Okay? 
Like, it's one thing to see Ian Gary get slept. It's another thing to see him get humiliated by Colby for five rounds. So I love this. But let's now listen in on what Colby wants Ian Gary to do. You wanted my attention? Now you got it. Everybody knows why you want to fight me, Ian. I'm the biggest star in the division. It's big city, bright lights, and the most attention and eyes you're ever going to have on you when it fight. But everybody knows, Ian, you missed your chance. You had your chance in December to step on the same stage as me and have a microphone and say whatever you want to say to me. But you were scared. You were scared of what I was going to say to you. And you got the sniffles and you cried your way out. That was just a taste of what I could do to you, Ian. All I did was ask the 5,000 people in attendance how many people banged your wife. One more survey for you all. For all the people out there, how many of you guys have fucked Ian Gary's wife? <laughs> oh, oh, man. It's not my fault every single one of them rose their hand. If you're scared of that, Ian, if you're scared of words, what do you think it's gonna be like when you step in a steel cage with chaos? Scared? You don't know what's gonna happen when you get in the cage with me. Dude, Kobe is not scary at all. He has no finishing ability whatsoever, but he is hilarious in this video. You could tell that Kobe's just having a really good time with the trash talk here, and I think that's why this works, because I think he's not even forcing it. I genuinely think he is having a great time talking shit about Ian Gary because he's the perfect fighter to talk shit about if you're Colby Covington. All right, he's the antithesis of who Colby is. He's the pipsqueak and Colby, he's the jock archetype. You just went life and death with a guy that does this part time and is a busboy outback. Dude serves blooming onions for a living. <laughs> blooming onions, bro. Jeff Neal, if you don't know, works as a part time waiter at like Golden Corral. Life and death? He did not go life and death. But that is hilarious, dude. Classic Colby Covington, man. And you went to a split decision with that guy? Now you want Donald Trump's favorite fighter? That's a big step up in competition, Junior. You're biting off more than when you can chew. You know what? I'm a giving man. I'm a kind man. I like to give everyone a chance. So everybody knows, Ian, what's in it for you. But what's in it for me? Tell me, why do I gotta go down in the rankings to fight some Casper the Ghost looking Irish kid who has a gold digging wife? I think Kobe is realizing that, listen, like my stock has plummeted. I got to have the right reasons for sticking around. If I'm not going to enjoy this shit, if I'm not going to enjoy what my opponent is going to bring or who my opponent is, if I'm not going to enjoy the buildup, I may as well just freaking hang it up. I'm going to call it quits. Kobe's not here for Shavkat Rachmanov fights. Remember when people were saying that a couple weeks ago? Dude, if Kobe fought Shavkat, there was no fucking chance he would have fought Shavkat Rachmanov. No chance. Ian Gary, though, I think he it's a dangerous fight 100%. But I think he loves that because he knows that if he fights Ian Gary, the buildup is going to be so chaotic. No pun intended for Chaos Covington, but it'll be so chaotic for Ian Gary. There's a chance that he'll get in Gary's head because there's just going to be so much turmoil. The fans are going to be chirping so much. The press conference is going to be insane with both of those guys on stage. I guarantee you Colby will get him to the point to where he wants to charge or run across the stage or maybe Gary gets the sniffles again. He knows there's a chance to get in this guy's head because the fan base is so against Ian Gary too, man. But now let's get into Colby's stipulations, okay? He has some requirements in order for him to even think about actually taking this fight, he's going to need Ian Gary to meet these requirements. Colby, let us know what they are. Let me teach you the art of the deal, Ian. Let's come to a compromise. If you can meet these three stipulations, we got to fight. Stipulation number one, you and that gold digging whore got to turn your Instagram comments back on. And if you turn them off before the fight, you forfeit the fight. If you turn them off during fight week or after I beat your ass, you forfeit your purse. So you guys have heard me talk about the Instagram situation a million times with Ian Gary. He's turning off his comments because, and these are Ian Gary's words, he wants to keep the peace on his Instagram. He doesn't want people commenting the same thing over and over and over again. And he knows if he enables them, people are just going to be coming at his wife, his relationship. They're going to be saying, is that kid even yours? I totally understand it. But for someone that wants to be a big star, for someone that just wants to be successful and popular in the UFC, in the day and age where social media is crucial for fighters to use in order to market themselves, by taking away people's ability to comment on your posts, that will destroy your engagement. And listen, one of the ways in which the fans will get to know you more is just by engaging with you. 
on social media. The UFC will also look at that to see if you are driving engagement to kind of gather whether or not you can move the needle. And what happens is if you take away people's ability to post a comment, it removes the little speech bubble, or I should say the comment bubble on your Instagram. And when you remove that, Instagram posts look like spam. It looks like some advertisement and you're just less likely to even engage with it or even like it. Even if you're not planning on commenting on an Instagram post anyway, if you don't see the comment bubble, it looks different. It looks weird. You're just going to keep scrolling because in your mind, it's like the only things that I ever see that look like that are advertisements, okay, or scam things or spam things. So he's really shooting himself in the foot by disabling comments. He's not going to get good engagement on his Instagram. And because of that, he'll become a little bit more irrelevant, a little bit, a lot more irrelevant than he could be. All right. So Ian Gary is going to have to bite the bullet and accept people commenting on his Instagram. How does he deal with it? Just don't look at the fucking comments, man. Don't look at them. Otherwise, he's just going to have to forfeit all the opportunities he's going to get by having a big social media presence. So he's going to have to choose. Do I want to blow up as a star or do I want to stay the same or have like a slow build to where I'm never going to reach my full potential, but I'll have some peace. And I get that if he wants to choose that. But do I actually think Ian Gary is going to accept comments? Fuck no. There's no way he's going to listen to what Colby wants, but let's get on to his next stipulation. Stipulation number two. Ian, we've heard you cry and beg on your knees, but we all know that you're not the boss and you don't wear the pants in the relationship. Layla, you got 60 seconds to convince me and the people why this fight needs to happen. So put your husband in the corner, get on your hands and knees, and beg. Although it would look weak for Ian Gary to allow Layla to do that, I don't think it's up to him, to be honest, because we know who kind of runs things. At least we know his social media manager might have an ego that'll force her to make a video in response to actually bite the bait. But what Ian should actually do, instead of listening to what Colby wants, because listen, I don't think Colby really expects Ian to do all this shit. But... I do believe Ian Gary's social media team should come out with a video in response to Colby Covington. They should go back and forth with Colby a little bit, at least on their own terms, not just accepting all of his own stipulations, because I honestly do feel like Colby is really interested in this fight. He knows the fans would absolutely love it. Um, so honestly, I kind of expect the response from Ian Gary very soon and his social media team. Uh, and don't put it past Layla to make her own 60 second video talking back, clapping back to Colby. So let's hear the next stipulation. Now for stipulation number three, my personal favorite. As you all might've noticed, something's been missing from my MyBookie promos lately. That's because I've been saving that spot for a special someone. Layla, you wanna be a star? You want the spotlight? I got it for you, sweetie. You want your 15 seconds of fame, Layla? I'll give you your 15 seconds of fame right here for America's Pick of the Week. After I beat your husband, because that's a foregone conclusion, I will beat him. He's going to sit in the corner just like he does with all that cuck stuff you guys do, and he's going to watch while you get your 15 seconds of fame. All right, well, I don't think that one's happening, but this fight needs to happen. If Ian Gary plays his cards right and doesn't just go MIA on social media and fucking shut down his Instagram even more, because honestly, the worst thing that Ian Gary could do it's just like go monk mode in the build-up to this fight, even though it would actually give him a better chance to win. This is his opportunity to have a mega fight. This is going to be Ian Gary's big feud, the beef, okay? Because it ain't going to be against Shavkat. They're not going to be talking any smack. You can't really do it against Wonderboy, especially now when Colby's stock has plummeted. If he goes at Wonderboy and tries to trash talk and build it to one of those fights, the fans are going to be more against him than ever before. And Leon Edwards is just not a shit talker. This is Gary's chance. And for Colby, this is the best matchup he could get. Dustin's not going to fight him. Connor is never going to fight him. Like, Colby's just not going to get one of those great fights again. We're not going to see him in Usman Part 3. I just think that this is the perfect matchup to make. I think it sells a fuckload of pay-per-views as well. Especially if Ian Gary doesn't go MIA, doesn't go monk mode, actually posts on social media and actually shows up to the press conference and talks shit, and we actually get some reporters to ask good questions. Because don't put it past the fucking reporters that show up at these press conferences. I just remember that. Don't put it past them to totally fumble 
what could be one of the best press conferences ever in UFC history, they might just be asking Ian Gary how the weather is, what's it like to be in, in what's it like to be in Anaheim, man, for Colby. Hey, man, how's, how's your body feeling after the long layoff? They could fuck it up, totally. So I, I hope that that's not the case. But we need to make this fight happen. It would sell a lot of pay-per-views. A strong main event. Put this on International Fight Week. Put it in Boston. I think Boston would be a, a great place for both of these guys to go. Ian Gary would have a couple screaming Irish people in the crowd. And Colby Covington would have the majority of supporters out there because he's on U.S. soil. Let's do it. U.S. soil, Colby Covington. Even though he just fought on U.S. soil and he has a chance to redeem himself. So let's see it. Let's see this fight. Let's see this matchup. And now we got to get on to the Francis Ngannou stuff, okay? Francis Ngannou came out with one of the biggest cope videos I've ever seen in my entire life. Making excuses for his loss against Anthony Joshua. And I know that there are going to be people in the comments that are going to say things like, wow, how ironic that Lucas Tracy is calling out someone for making excuses when Benoit's doing the same thing on his Instagram and shit like that. And Lucas is making excuses for picking Benoit. It's different. Francis Ngannou got annihilated in the first and second round. The cardio was not a factor, all right? He, at no point in that fight, had any success. Whereas Benoit St. Denis had a successful first round, is a fighter that weaponizes pace, and gassed out after the first five minutes. Look at him get up to his feet after the first round ends. He looks like he's done. He's totally gassed. He showed up with a volcano on his face, had it all fight week. He had staff, okay? Anyone denying that is delusional. It'd be one thing if he was claiming staff and we didn't see anything. He had a fucking volcano on his face. He had staff. He was on antibiotics. That affected his gas tank. It's different, okay? It is different. Francis Ngannou just got fucking smoked, all right? And let's just play some of the shit that he's saying in this video. Even, um, even leading up to that fight, that fight day, it wasn't my day. It wasn't just my day. Not to say he would have, maybe not to say the result would have been different, but it wasn't my day. Like um, at uh, any moment of the day that I feel like, okay, we are good here to go, you know. That that is crazy. All right, this is the type of shit we used to hear from Darren Till, but at least Darren Till would actually show up and land some punches, and he would have a close fight with Robert Whitaker, who is a top three former champion middleweight in the world at the time. Darren Till would always go out there and say, hey, man, the better man won on the night. No excuses. I think I do a lot better in the rematch, but the better man won on the night. I remember being even in the locker, trying to warm up, and then, bro, he wasn't going. I, I, I was feeling asleep. I told Eric, like, bro, something, like, I'm feeling asleep. I'm sweating, but I'm feeling asleep. But, you know, I assume that's how some people that... I fought, I have fought some people that um, I beat, have feared before, but it was my, basically my first time to fear that. So, yeah. <laughs> Are you kidding me? To say something like it wasn't my night, I was sweating backstage. There's just nothing he could have done to win that fight. All right. This was not a Darren Till style of moment. Where Darren Till used to come out and give a bunch of excuses, followed by, no excuses. It does not matter if it was your day or not. You would have never have beaten Anthony Joshua. I'm sorry. Like, Anthony Joshua literally would have had to show up with not only staph infection. <laughs> he'd have to show up with a, a broken leg. He'd have to show up with broken arms, with the Jack Della Maddalena special. And he would probably have to slip on a banana peel too. So... 99.9999% of the time, Francis probably loses that fight. Let's just be honest. He was not even close to Joshua's level. The, the skill gap was too much for him to handle. And I love the idea of Francis Ngannou fighting Tyson Fury again, although I think it might not go his way. But you never know. You never know. But he has no chance to beat Anthony Joshua, okay? It's just not gonna happen. Joshua's, he'll never get to fight him again, okay? And even in MMA, there's a worry now that Francis's chin might not be the same. You never know what's gonna happen. He's 37, fair enough. He's not taking that much damage in his fights, but like, 
that was a fuckload of damage. People were saying that was one of the most violent finishes that they've ever seen in boxing. And he's also had tons of sparring sessions, and people tend to take a lot of damage in that as well. So if he gets hit with four-ounce gloves against this Fajeda guy, could be a nightmare. Really could be a nightmare. Um, I do understand that Francis Ngannou may have not been at his best, and that the better man won on the night. And I understand that Anthony Joshua, just because he was better on the night, does not necessarily mean he's the better boxer. We all know that. We know how it goes. I'm joking. Okay, yeah, Francis, um, I'm happy that he made a fuckload of money because that was a, a really bad KO. And I honestly thought he was going to win that because I was, again, really swayed by his performance against Tyson Fury. And again, I'll be the first one to admit it. I'm a total casual when it comes to boxing anthony joshua's career i've only seen a couple of his fights and the last time i've actually watched a live anthony joshua fight was against ruiz i saw the first one and i saw the second one and that's literally it i've just seen highlights of him versus Usyk. uh but of course just because you don't look good against Usyk doesn't mean you're gonna look bad against nganu actually i just want to say this Usyk is not even that impressive to me when I'm watching him fight Anthony Joshua. He just has a, such a, he has such a slow, I can't call him slow. He's a heavyweight, of course, but like, am I the only one that watches Alexander Usyk fight Anthony Joshua and just, I don't understand how he's so good. Like, he's just slow. He's not explosive. He's right there. Of course, he has good defense. He's, he's crafty. I think it's, that's what it is. He's crafty. He has very high fight IQ. But he's not particularly fast. He's not like an Azamat Mirzakhanov density maxer fighting bigger guys, but just super fast. It is kind of weird. But Anthony Joshua's speed against Nganu looked otherworldly. I'd actually be interested to see how Usyk would handle Nganu because Usyk doesn't really have that nasty KO power. And he's not a big guy. He's not very rangy. Stylistically, it could make for an interesting fight. Obviously, you'd probably have to go with Usyk, but just stylistically... It would be interesting. It'd be more dangerous for Usyk as well. Um, I want Francis to go back to MMA. I just thought that this was kind of crazy. Fair enough. It wasn't his best night. Fair enough. But saying that almost kind of makes it seem like maybe things could have been different if I was feeling better. I just don't think that's the case. Honestly, the skill gap was just too far. All right. Unlike, as I said, the Benoit Denise fight, we saw Benoit run through Dustin Poirier in the first round. All right, wasn't able to keep it going for more than that. And he made some serious mistakes. Benoit St. Denise has to really fix his defense, 100%. All right, no excuses. The better man won in the night. I will be back. The better man won in the night. But anyway, that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you think in the comments about Ian Gary versus Colby Covington. Who would you root for in the buildup to that fight? Did you like Colby's new video? And what do you think about Francis Ngannou and the video that he dropped? Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. Until next time.